Hi, I'm Jason Gorber from ThatShop.com, and we're here to look at some nonsense from The Who. Big change. Pete Townsend, um, one of the great sort of mildly prophetic, mildly poetic, mildly uh, pugilistic um, uh, artists from the 60s and 70s. Um, obviously, their music continued well into uh, the modern times, but the sort of sweet spot of The Who from the mid-60s through the early 70s uh, produced some of the most extraordinary music. Um, absolutely one of my favorite bands of all time. Um, um, I just absolutely adore the stuff. Uh, Tommy's such um, an important record, but it's actually the live versions of Tommy that really set it off. And um, for me, um, Live at Leeds being an excellent uh, example, I love the movie. Um, Quadrophenia, the sort of two films after uh, Tommy, an incredible, deep, profound, um, musically ambitious rock opera. And in between was going to be a project called Lifehouse. Um, many people already know this, uh, but uh, Pete had this crazy idea he couldn't articulate to anybody, namely um, uh, what was... Uh, going to be some sort of way that we are all connected by some sort of technology and that we would all find ways of having music transmitted directly to us from the comfort of wherever we're sitting. You know, like entire things. There's lots of people that sort of went on about sort of like a pre-internet sort of um, a way of, of being, but on, on, a, on a more metaphysical or spiritual note, it was the, uh, literally the note, the one note, the one thing that sort of um, um, tied us all together. Um, and in the hope that everything that sort of, when we are so connected, we'd actually see our shared humanity. Of course, we've seen very much how simply being very online does not necessarily um, create senses of community as much as it creates factions to be uh, against one another. That was also touched upon about this. So um, uh, the Life House Project um, has lots of history behind it, and when I show the sort of uh, larger set, um, I'll go into that a bit more. But suffice to say, sort of like the Get Back sessions with the Beatles, it started out as sort of a film project, and then it ended up being um, something very different, and we ended up basically um, um, emerging with most of the songs ending up on Who's Next, um, as well as some subsequent records. So, um, as part of the 50th anniversary, um, the Who have put together a series of releases, and one of them has finally arrived. I mean, this is um, relatively late. It came out a couple weeks ago, but here in Canada, the shipping just finally uh, uh, came through. So this came from directly from retail. You see it comes in uh, this sort of shipping box, which is actually quite nice directly from UMG. Uh, if you would buy it at a retail store, this would normally be uh, opened up. But I find, rightly or wrongly, that when I'm buying these box sets, it's usually better to uh, buy from those that I can get much better return policies and not feel that I'm costing money to the store because it's not always great. And um, it's just, uh, it is what it is, especially for the vinyl box sets. And so I'm finding more and more, especially when it's something, uh, a set like this, where there will be multiple discs, if there's any issues or any issues. So there's two, bo two technically three box sets, and we'll be looking at the, the other ones um, later, for now is the other one I got. Uh, but this is here, the Who's Next iconic 1971 album, boom. So this is the box set version with the artwork from um, the original uh, record. Um, so it includes um, um, several things. One, it actually has, again, the copy of Who's Next, the remastered, um, half-speed, mastered, blah, blah, blah version. I have a gazillion copies. I have the classic copy of a first pressing. I have um, Super Audio CD, SHM, SACD. I have all kinds of nonsense. But um, what I do not have is the Who Live at Civic Auditorium, San Francisco, 1971, where, again, um, you're, you get basically... Um, a bunch of stuff from the early records, Tommy, um, and earlier, I mean, Magic Bus is on here, uh, Sometime Blues, etc. And then interspersed here, you have um, some of the songs that inevitably just would help to find them. The Bubba O'Reilly's, the Won't Get Fooled Again, Behind Blue Eyes, etc. I mean, this is this is such an integral record to the canon. Um, so beautiful. I mean, the fact of the matter is the monolith with them pissing on it. I mean, it, that doesn't say at all. I'm not sure what it does. So here we are. Made in Czech Republic. Box set is not one of those ones with the side opening. It's, it's, a, it's a top loading. So, you know, I'm less of a fan of that. Let's see how the records look and how they're actually stored inside. So as I open this up... 
as carefully as I can, because I'm a crazy person, as we have indicated many times on this channel. And I take the back plastic off while keeping some of the front. Look, plastic. There we go. Take the top box off. Right, so very simple, normal box. And inside the actual container, we have one of these ribbons that you lift up. And if I lift up the ribbon, I have the records inside. Back of the box, very simple. Nothing particularly spectacular. But what we have here is we have a copy of, a full copy of Who's Next. Um, sorry, excuse me. A full copy of Who, see, I got confused uh, what was going on here. Um, so this is interesting. This is a very weird way they did that. Okay. Um, so you have Who's Next here. And then as you open up the gatefold, you actually have the first disc of the Live at the Auditorium. So this, this part of the gatefold is one record. This is another record. And then there's another gatefold for the rest of the auditorium show. Fascinating. Did not know that. Um, this is why we do these videos sometimes. So there's Who's Next um, um, sort of split um, away with a regular back. Let's look at what the actual record looks like, how it actually is shipped. It is shipped in paper sleeves, but they're printed paper sleeves, which are a little bit better. Um, head hunters, get ahead um, with all the uh, Polydor stuff, like uh, one of the original inners. The record itself looks reasonably clean. It's going to go into my degrader. More on that in a future video. Um, yeah, the record looks fine. I don't see any particular uh, issues. If I look at the um, uh, run out, it, I see Miles Abbey Road, clearly half speed version of this. Now, um, I'm just gonna pop this actually into the degrader as I'm about to clean it. Um, uh, half speed master at Abbey Road means by definition it's the digital file. It's not gonna be an all analog thing. The condition of these tapes is certainly up for debate. Um, again, I have the classic records version, which was a fortune, um, but even that has tons of surface noise. Um, we can dream that we're going to get some sort of ridiculous UHQR um, or 45 RPM version, although I don't know how that'll break up the record. Um, nonetheless, um, I look forward to yet another version of this record um, to see how it sounds. It's never been the best sounding record of all time. A lot of it was actually based on Pete's demos, which is, again, mostly what the other set's all about. And a lot of Pete's demos recorded at home, especially the synth parts, etc., just then had the band on top of it. So that's interesting. If you actually listen to Bob O'Reilly, it never sounds, it sounds it's an incredible song, but it never sounds on a good system, really robust. And then you kick into Bargain, where suddenly everything opens up once you have different stereos. Things were recorded all over the place, all kinds of nonsense. But, who live at the Civic Auditorium? So there we go. We have here what the paper looks like. And a similar thing. I believe there was a color vinyl version of this, but I've been burned so often of late with color vinyl version that I just went for the black vinyl. So simple as that. You can see nice and clean, no obvious fingerprints. Again, pressed in uh, Czech Republic, um, stamped the way it is. And again, Miles at Abbey Road showing that these are also half speed masters. I'm gonna put that in my little stand there. And then we have the other two-sided record, two-sided. The other gatefold, which has an essay in it by Andy Neal, explaining the Civic Auditorium gig. So this is the Monday 13th, December 1971. And yeah, they're all Monday 13th. This is part two of that. Yeah, Baby Don't You Do is nine minutes and Magic Bus is 17 minutes. That's why we're putting it on all these uh, separate records. Introduction to Tommy, Overture, Amazing Journey, and Sparks. Um, my understanding is this is not the complete, complete concert, but it's pretty close. Uh, and certainly the Who in this era were more famous for being a live band uh, than an album band. And so I'm really looking forward to hearing this in all of its glory. It's been bootlegged 
many times, but to have an official release is certainly something. So really what I'm doing with buying this set is buying a nice fancy box to have this three disc live set. There are worse things and more idiotic things I've certainly done in my life. Um, the other vinyl set, which will, uh, it's actually really challenging. It's only available at the moment at thewho.com. It's not available at any other retailer. Um, is um, the demos on vinyl form, um, a selection of the demos, and then eventually we'll get to see the sort of 10 CD monster set. Um, um, again, all digital, but nonetheless has sort of everything uh, in there and Atmos Mix, and I'm very much looking forward to checking that out in future. Uh, here we have, again, paper sleeves and another version of the record. This is going to be ye old uh, repetition, but yeah. Looks great. I see no obvious thing. It looks brand new, even though it's been in paper sleeves. I see no crazy dust. There's no particular fingerprints, nothing like that, that I see even from much, much fancier and much more high-end uh, um, releases that tend to still have issues. So there's our look at the Who's Next and the Who's Next Live box set, uh, limited edition box set on vinyl. Uh, I hope uh, I, I hope they sound good. Let's put it that way. I look forward to actually listening to it. Um, let us know in the comments if you actually have this up and had a chance to look at it. That'd be fantastic. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe. Follow us on social media. It really would mean a lot um, if you support the site. There's some great, great people at That Shelf doing a lot of good work, and it would really help a lot if you came and uh, sort of uh, supported some of um, our site and its uh, many um, writers. Um, we'll see you next video. All the best. Take care.